Hello friend! Welcome back to Zuzu Corrin's Expert Mage Progression Guide, where I show you a recommended boss and gear progression, so that you can have a smooth journey of your own. I'm Zuzu Corrin and I aim to entertain you, encourage you and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzu Corrin family! Last time, we defeated the Bee Queen and got our hands on the Bee Gun, a decent magic weapon for the Wall of Flesh. We also completed our Hellevator and Hellbridge. Today, let's defeat the Wall of Flesh and enter Hard Mode. I'll also show you a few really good early Hard Mode Mage weapons. To begin, we will first be getting Hellstone. Craft an Obsidian Skin Potion using Water Leaf, Fire Blossom, Obsidian, and Bottled Water. If you found one randomly, then you don't have to craft it yourself. What this potion does is to allow you to dive into lava unharmed. This lets you mine Hellstone, an ore found in the underworld. It's simply this shiny thing found scattered among the ash blocks. You need a couple, so just keep mining for the potion's duration. One potion is more than enough for our purposes. Once you're done with that, craft Hellstone bars with the ore and obsidian. You will need one obsidian per bar. Next, craft the Molten Pickaxe with 20 Hellstone Bars. This will help us mine Hard Mode Ores, so you can't skip out on this. I also want to take this time to introduce you to Magic Power Potions. These potions are crafted with Fallen Stars, Moon Glow, and Deathweed. These are rather rare herbs, but if you get your herb farm going and use a Staff of Regrowth, you can get lots of them pretty easily. This potion increases your magic damage, so it's quite essential for mages. The other potion is the Mana Regeneration Potion, which is made with Fallen Stars, Moon Glow, and Daybloom. This is by far the most important potion for mages, especially if you are not going to depend on the Mana Flower. Even if you are using the Mana Flower, this potion is still amazing as it greatly boosts your Mana Regen. So with all that done, we can now take down the Wall of Flesh. As a mage, this boss isn't too insanely difficult compared to some other classes. I'll be using my weapon of choice, which is the Grey Zapinator, all for that sweet sweet RNG burst. When you're ready, buff up and throw the Guide Voodoo doll into lava. For this boss, the main problem is probably the Hungries, especially for the Grey Zapinator in particular. Because of its slow fire rate, it's pretty hard to deal with the Hungries. However, it can be both a curse and a blessing as well. Because the Zapinator deals a random effect each time it hits an enemy, the Hungries might actually give us a higher chance of dealing a buttload of damage on the wall. Regardless, just try to aim for the eyes and get rid of the detached Hungries whenever you can. If you've been paying attention to the health bar, we have been shaving off chunks of the wall's health, which is always a nice thing to see. The lasers are pretty difficult to dodge, but going up and down seems to avoid most of it. As the boss's health gets lower, the wall speeds up greatly so always try to maintain a huge distance between you and the wall. At top speed, it can actually outrun Hermes boots, especially if you don't dash. And you really don't want to deal with that. Well, things are going pretty okay, but because of one hungry, I took way too much contact damage. Overall, it should be fine though. There we go, the Wall of Flesh has been defeated. The Ancient Spirits of Light and Dark has been released. Make sure to grab your loot. For our treasure bag, you will always get a Pawn Hammer, which is used for getting Hard Mode Ores. We also have the Shadow Heart, which gives you one extra accessory slot, which is honestly pretty game changing. We got a Warrior Emblem though, which is unfortunate. The Mage Emblem would boost our damage by 15%. We can always farm for it later, but if you get one, then good for you. If you get the laser machine gun, it's a pretty solid starting hard mode weapon, but we can do without it. First of all, I want to show you the poison star. This weapon is dropped by the black recalses, which are the hard mode spider variants. They are crazy tough and can stun you, so I don't recommend taking them on head on. Head over to any spider biome and try to look for some. They spawn pretty regularly, so that won't take too long. There's one right here in the water. If you want to, you could use the Valthorn. It stunlocks the Black Recalls and prevents it from shooting its immobilizing web, but it can still approach you, and well, its contact damage is no joke. 
plus you only deal 1 damage per tick of the Valthorn, so it's crazy slow. However, this is a solid surefire method to farm them safely. Just build a box around you and slowly chip away at their health. My preferred method is to use the Flame Lash. Make a 1 block gap for you to steer the projectile out of the box. This weapon deals way more damage and also burns them for DOT. However, this might be a little tricky to do, and it's almost impossible for mobile players. So there's actually another way to do it. But if you want to try this method, you can just leave the one block gap right between you and the spider. This means that pressing the attack key simply shoots the projectile straight at them. But of course, PC will have its benefits, because you can do things just like this. The other method would be to simply have blocks between you and the enemy like this, then shoot it to the left. If you do so, the projectile will automatically curve towards it. I'm controlling it here, but releasing should be fine if you fire off to the left. Just make sure to check the surrounding areas if the spawns start to slow down. This is because some black recalses may spawn in the random gaps in the walls. Just like right here, there were just three chilling in the hole. I mean, if you really want to, you could just fight them head on, but if you do get stunned, then say goodbye to your life. Okay, well, I guess we got the poison staff. If you're wondering, it drops at a 1 in 40 chance, which isn't too high, but not absurdly low. As you can see, this weapon deals much higher damage, especially if all 3 or 4 bolts hit. It also poisons enemies. It's a really solid starting weapon if you want to farm for it. We managed to find the wizard here as well, which is a pretty important NPC for mages. He sells items to craft mage weapons, and also greater mana pots. The crystal ball is also a crafting station, and gives a magic power buff as well. I don't need him right now, but it's nice that we've unlocked him. If you don't wish to get the poison star, there are two other weapons I recommend. The first of which is the Sky Fracture. This is a strong weapon that has a high critical hit ratio. However, it is rather mana intensive. For this weapon, you will need Light Shards, which drop from Light Mummies. These spawn on Hollowed Sand, which is probably the biggest issue here. Unless your world is lucky enough to get a Hollowed Desert, if you really want this weapon, you probably have to corrupt a desert or an ocean somewhere yourself, which is a tough decision that you have to make. Fortunately, the Hollow is less obtrusive compared to the Crimson or the Corruption, so it's not too bad. One simple way to do this is to get pink ice blocks or pearlstone blocks, then head over to a desert of choice and place them into the sand. It's also good if you can cover them up for more mummy spawns. If you want to, you could just flatten an area like I've done here, place a row of pink ice, then cover it with a layer of sand. All we're doing now is basically waiting for the Hollow to spread to the sand. This is how we can get lots of light mummies to spawn. Anyway, since this will take some time to spread, I'll get back to the Sky Fracture later on. The next possible weapon to get is the Crystal Serpent, which is relatively much simpler to acquire. First, you need to get a bug net from the merchant NPC. Next, look for rocks or logs like this, and break them. There is a chance that worms will spawn. If the worms come out, use the net to catch them for bait. If you happen to find a can of worms from exploring, opening them will also give you a pretty hefty amount of worms. So this is definitely preferred for lazy players. It also gives you enchanted nightcrawlers, which is what we need. But not to worry, we can simply craft enchanted nightcrawlers with normal worms and a fallen star. I happened across the gnome here and I want to show you something. If you ever find a gnome, try to bring it to the surface. It can be a little tricky, but if you manage to do it, it will petrify into a gnome statue. This gives you luck wherever you place it, so it's a great help. Just carry it around with you. Right, for the Crystal Serpent, find a body of water in the hollowed biome. You can do this underground as well, but the surface is relatively more peaceful. The larger the water body, the better. Craft a fishing rod from Demonite or Crimtain and use enchanted nightcrawlers as bait. If you manage to get the Sitting Duck's fishing pole from the Travelling Merchant, then even better. Now all you need to do is fish. The Crystal Serpent has a 1% chance from being fished up in the Hollowed Biome, and it's a really really good magic weapon. But of course, this is all up to RNG. You could find one within 5 minutes, or you could find none after an hour. 
but for those of you who are patient, this is pretty worth it. To make it easier and preserve your bait, head over to the ocean to pick some coral. Then craft the sonar potion using coral and a few herbs. It's really simple to make. With this potion, you are able to see what's on the line. This allows you to simply reel in the valuable catches, such as crates, the prismite, and the crystal serpent of course. Well, we actually got one. That took me about 15 minutes. Like I said, it's really dependent on RNG. So anyway, this weapon hits enemies and breaks off into multiple fragments. It's really good for enemies that are grouped up in a tight space. Its damage is a little more inconsistent compared to the poison star, since you can't really control the extra bolts. However, this weapon excels in tight spaces where the bolts can ricochet off the walls. In situations like this, you can pull off some high IQ trick shots and deal high damage from safety. Now back to the sky fracture. Our desert has corrupted really nicely, so it's time to farm the light mummies. I'll stand a distance away, because enemies won't spawn too near you. I forgot to mention this just now, but the crystal serpent also has a really high range, unlike the poison staff, so that's another thing that you can factor in. I've added a water candle to boost the spawn rates and also placed the gnome statue for bonus luck, which will boost our drop rates. We are going to need two light shards, which drop from the light mummies at a 10% rate. They also drop from a few other enemies in the underground hollow desert, but I think that's a little too dangerous for an early hard mode character. This is probably the most manageable way to get them. Ah, there we got one! Only one more to go. This shouldn't take too long, but remember that you're taking the risk of corrupting your own desert. If you're concerned about that, go for one of the other weapons. Alright, there we go. The next thing that we will need is a Mithril Anvil. You will need this eventually, but for this weapon and other crafted weapons, we will need one right now. Use the Pawn Hammer and try to break Demon Altars in the Crimson or Corruption. This will generate hard mode ores in your world. Try to break them in groups of 3. With that done, use your Molten Pickaxe and mine the first tier of hard mode ore. This will be either Palladium, this orange metal, or Cobalt, a more distinct blue ore. We don't need too much of this for now, so just get enough for you to make the pick. Ooh, that's bad. We have a pirate invasion and we aren't prepared at all. If you ever get one this early on, well, you're in for a bad time. Well, that's basically the essence of this entire event right now. These guys are really tough and deal lots of damage. At the same time, they won't leave until you finish the invasion, so you have no choice but to respawn, try to kill a few before dying again, then repeat this over and over again for like, what, 40 minutes? As you can see, these guys really hurt, and killing them only moves the progress bar by a small amount. It's really been some time and I've only progressed this much. This really reminds me of the woes of expert mode. Anyway, there is an easy lava trap to deal with them, but I haven't really built it yet. I guess I'll do that when we build our arena. Perhaps you should have built one in pre-hard mode. I chose not to do that just to get the video out ASAP, but well, it might be wise for you to do so. Hello again! Welcome to Ghost Town Terraria. It's been a really long time with many many deaths as you can see, and I'm only slightly more than halfway done. But with the power of editing, you don't have to sit through this nightmare. Ta-da! Pirate invasion over. Well, let's clean up these graves, I guess. We actually need them for later, so don't throw them away if you can. As I was saying, craft the first tier pickaxe ASAP. Then head deeper into the world to grab the second tier ore, which is Mithril or Oricalcum. Use the Spelunkus potion for an easier time. If all you're seeing is tier 1 ore, go deeper into the world. When you're done, smelt the ore into the bars and craft a hard mode anvil. This will allow you to do hard mode item crafting. You can just replace your own anvil. Lastly, we will need 16 souls of light, which drop from enemies in the underground hollow. By the way, if you see a glowing crystal that changes colour, 
It's a gelatin crystal. This is the summoning totem for the Queen Slime, so just collect and keep them. With all that done, craft the Sky Fracture with the Magic Missile, Souls of Light, and Light Shards at the Hard Mode Anvil. That was troublesome, but pretty worth it for bosses later on. I quite like this weapon, but it does cost a lot of mana. So buy the Greater Mana Potions from the Wizard. This, combined with the Mana Flower, means that you don't have to worry too much about that. Get the Crystal Ball as well, for the magic buff when you right click on it. The last thing I want to do today is to set up our Crimson Biome. Yes, you heard me, a Crimson Biome in a Corruption World. In 1.4, placing graves will turn the area into a Graveyard Biome. The Dryad will sell seeds of the opposite world evil in Graveyard Biomes. This means we actually have access to Icor in a Corruption World. This is why I recommended Corruption at the start, because it has a much smoother progression curve, yet we can still get Icor. Buy some Crimson Seeds and head over to somewhere underground that you don't mind corrupting. All you need to do is plant the Crimson Seeds on dirt blocks around the area, and over time, the Crimson will spread. Anyway, there are a few other magic weapons that you can consider, which I might get in the next episode if you want me to show them. For example, there is the Crystal Storm and the Meteor Staff. Both are really strong, but have a high mana consumption. Just let me know down in the comments if you want to see those. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too for more Terraria guides and coverage. Do follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. This has been Zuzucorn Games. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye-bye!